welcome to the last video of 2023. We got the puppy. Okay. Delco. Delco puppy. Okay. I don't got a lot of room to work in here. I got my snowblower in here uh, with its cool hood scoop, uh, which is actually the door. Get to that in a minute. And uh, we haven't even had any winter yet. We just got uh, this little bit of snow tonight is the first snow we've actually had all winter. <clears throat> which I'm fine with because I don't care for snow. And uh, of course it's gotten lots of uh, extra Harley time out there. And my son's been able to ride his bike. So he's been pretty happy so far. But uh, we're starting to get into a little bit of snow. We see some colder temperatures-ish coming up in the next couple weeks but for the most part the snow will actually be gone tomorrow um, anyway got home today and my son wanted to build something with me in the garage and I really I don't have any projects on the go right now so I had this old uh, air compressor tank um, <clears throat> sitting out behind the shop and I thought you know what let's make something to burn uh, stuff in whether it be wood or whatever being that we just had Christmas, of course, we had a ton, uh, a ton of cardboard, tons of it, tons of cardboard, wrapping paper, and everything else, and it was an absolute pain in the butt to stuff into recycling bins, garbage bags, and everything else, and get all that gone this week. It was a total pain in the rear, so I thought it would be cool to have some sort of little small portable, like, incinerator for cardboard and, you know, whatever else. So I thought, let's make something like that. We can, you know, just store it behind the, the garage, the shed, or whatever. And it's not in the way. We don't have to use the fire pit in the backyard. Because when you use the fire pit to burn cardboard and stuff like that, you get all those, like, light pieces of cardboard floating up. Red hot embers going into the trees and stuff like that. It's just not, not really a good thing. So um, this would be a good solution to that. Just to, uh, you know, just a small hole, throw some little bit of wood in there and uh, we'll make a port on the bottom. That'll have some sort of a manifold going inside with a, <clears throat> a damper on it so you control airflow going in. You could also turbocharge it essentially with a leaf blower or something like that or compressed air, whatever we end up doing later. So I got that cut there. This is the door for it. We'll uh, just weld some steel in behind there so it has something to close against uh, and get a couple hinges for it. That's the crap that was actually already in. You can kind of see. Yeah. You can kind of see how much crap was actually already in there. Look at that. Brutal. Brutal. That's my super bright rechargeable light Amazon there's a three inch hole that I cut knocked out already of course it was it's concave now because I pounded it out with a hammer but that's gonna be for the chimney or the smokestack which is gonna be this piece of three inch pipe that I just had laying around I got it marked off at 15 inches which is gonna bring it just to the front so what I'm gonna do now uh, my little guy's in bed now already, so I don't want to go too far without him here, but I want to get a couple little things done, just where I'm doing a lot of cutting and stuff like that, because you can't really partake with using the, the cutting wheel yet. He's only uh, five, actually he's just turning six, but um, we're going to cut that off, and I'm actually going to use this, recycle this, I'm just going to flatten it out, and we'll weld that to the front side of it, and... I could actually make that a little bit longer because we're going to want some of that sticking out. We're going to end up making a 90 to go up. A 3 inch should be fine for this uh, just because of the size of it. But basically, I'm going to cut that off, weld that on the end of it so it's closed on the one end. And I think <clears throat> on the top portion of it, I'm going to kind of cut a an oval, kind of centerish, centerish to the, uh, the tank itself. And then <clears throat> on the other side, so on the bottom, near the front, it's going to have about a two inch, one and a half to two inch hole, maybe like one and three quarter or something like that, just for anything that that gets in there can fall out um, and not sit there and just rot the thing out uh, in a short period of time. 
My idea with that is to keep a lot of the heat at the top, but also kind of make it a little more of a high efficiency so the, the smoke has more work to do on its way out. It's going to heat the top really, really well. And that's kind of why I'm going to leave this plate, the old compressor mount on there, because, uh, I mean, maybe it could be a cooktop. Who knows? We'll find out later. We'll see if that works. Who knows? We're just kind of screwing around at this point. Of course, it's got plastic wheels on it that are probably going to melt off. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> we're all just kind of getting our voices back, too. Everybody's had uh, colds, so it's been a lot of fun. Kids had RSV, which is not fun, especially when you have a two-year-old, too. However, he's been taking it better than everybody, so way to go. Anyway, this is my mess that I'm working in right now, and I'm just going to cut that off, weld that pipe up, and then I'll come up with a design. <clears throat> to get it set up and then I think I'll probably weld it in tomorrow <clears throat> when my uh, when my son can uh, come back out and continue on with me on the holiday the last day off before I have to go back to work so anyway let's get to her all right well I got her tacked on there I'm using my hex 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 Volgen welder I've got my big gas on and all that good stuff I'm not really gonna spend too much time dialing this thing in right now this is just uh, obviously it's not anything pretty or beautiful <coughs> and I'm only running on 120 volt right now or sorry 110 volt right now I haven't bothered plug I'm not gonna bother plugging into the to the 220 it does a lot better of a job with 220 but again we're just kind of throwing together a, a incinerator fire pit thingamajigger whatever not too worried about it so uh, I should really spend the time to clean this fucking bench up but I'm not so sue me. I should probably, though, well, maybe put on a, a glove so I don't wreck my hand right now. Didn't even bother cleaning the paint off, because why bother? So now I got a gap, because this is two pieces of steel, of course, welded across, because that's the two parts of the tank that we cut out. You looking at my gut? Now I'll just hammer it down and I just got the ground sitting on my toolbox there, my stainless top. So that's how that works. Alright, use the heat we just generated and pound her down again. really good welder for what it is they're cheap they work great fill it a little bit As you can see so what are you looking at my gut for it makes nice welds And this is only on 110 right now. Normally I got it hooked up to 220, but my this one, my ACDC TIG, is using the 220 right now. Could I just unplug it and plug in the other one? I could. But it was just easier to plug that into 110, so I didn't have to put the 220 adapter on it.
Look at that. Jeez. Put me on the pipeline. Oh. Trudeau and Biden canceled those. 300 million, trillion, 300 million dollars. That's right. We don't need jobs. Who needs jobs? Something like that. All right. Everybody take a good fucking look. What's the big deal? That's not a big deal. What do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem. It's you guys who keep looking at it. Fill her up where I put my talk here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can't complain with that. That'll do the trick. Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, just you know, throw me on the old pipeline. Can't. Can't do it. Thank you, Biden. Okay. Thank you, Trudeau. Where my wire brush go? It's probably in this mess somewhere. Anyway, well, that's not important. So, uh, look at that. Yeah. It's a little crude in a couple spots on account of uh, I didn't clean anything. I got a little bit hot. She's a little bit hot. We can turn her down for the next round if there's another round. I don't think there's going to be another round. I think we got her. Anyway. So now, what we're going to do is uh, figure out really what we're going to do with the design here. For the airflow, hang my whip back up here. I think we're done with that tonight. Uh, I'll show you actually. I'll show you the display on this welder. It's very nice. Like I said, this is a his his Wagen or something like that. It's uh, from Amazon. Really good price. I think it was uh, five forty nine Canadian. So even cheaper for you uh, Americans out there. And uh, works really well. So let me uh, let me give you a quick little show about of it. There's the name, Hezigswagen. It's a MiG 250, and the display is very very nice. All sorts of different settings you can actually do uh, stick welding with it and TIG welding, but not aluminum TIG welding. If you want to do aluminum TIG welding, you're going to need this Hezigswagen, and uh, then you're going to have to buy a you know aluminum rod and stuff like that, which. You know, we're all set up to do. That's good. And uh, that's the TIG whip for it. It's, uh, you know, that kind. But you can get a foot pedal for it from from Hezigswagen. <laughs> um, here's your everything. You got twist lock. This is the ground cable. Uh, so your flux core. If you're using flux core wire, this cable here goes down here, and then your ground would go up here. So that's how you use flux core. I'm not using flux core, I'm using solid, and I am using my gas there. But that's that's basically it. It's, uh, it's a really nice machine. A lot of settings on here, like I was saying. Um, you can set it up to do automatic welding and everything else like that. So basically, you just kind of pull the trigger and it will set itself to what you're doing. I'm not really into all that. I just kind of set it up real quick and it's good enough, right? So like I said, I didn't clean any of that. I got her burning a little bit hot there, but this is also a luminized pipe. So you can see you can have too bad of a weld on some of it. But um, of course, you also saw the condition of that piece that... We welded which was the piece that I cut out of here and it was quite rusty so anyway that being said
it's real nice. So if you're running 110, it'll show you 110. If you run 220, it'll show you 220. Um, and like I said, there's lots of different setups you can do for this thing. Just check them out if you're interested in a good welder and you don't want the to pay the money for the red kind or the blue kind. There's the Hez, Hezixvagen kind. They work really well. 549 Canadian on Amazon <coughs> is what it was when I bought it. And uh, and of course, there's always deals. They also have um, you know $100, $150 off coupons all the time on it and stuff like that. I'll do some aluminum welding with this guy another day. But uh, this machine, a little more expensive. I believe this one was $749 Canadian when I bought it. Not sure what they are now, but again, they always have coupons. And uh, this machine is really cool. It does literally everything for TIG welding. Um, from steel, um, copper. Um, sorry, I'm losing my, my words here. Aluminum, uh, everything. It does everything. It's a, it's a really good machine. Really, really happy with it for the price. I mean, it's not... Uh, you know, it's not going to make uh, $100,000 welds, but uh, it does pretty damn good. So, that being said, I'm going to lay out a design on here. And I don't know if I'm going to bother starting to cut anything out on it tonight. I might wait uh, till tomorrow where my son can join me. But basically, this is just going to... Oh, no. I guess that makes sense because the end, because of the end, I could probably put it in and slide it up, but the end of this, ooh, the end of it's a little bit warm. Either way, you get the idea. That's going to slide in there, kind of like so, so it'll be like that inside, and I want the opening kind of in the top, and then one on the bottom near the front here for everything to fall out. We'll put it on a slight downward angle which of course will help smoke come out and also whatever accumulates inside the stovepipe to fall out so that'll be that all right so I got it to fit inside there real quick and this line here my handy dandy super accurate paint marker that is where it's going to be welded and we'll have this much sticking out to connect to a stove pipe, whatever. Good enough. This is exactly the middle between here and here. And yeah, this is where I want to do like a ovalish kind of hole. I have no engineering background or anything. I think that's about six inches, right? There. I want to make it long, so that's six, that way, and that's six, that way, so that would be a really long hole, and I feel like if that's what we go with, that should get real good heat on the top, and it should allow for really good flow, uh, <clears throat> also, we wouldn't have to go too far down the sides because I don't want to go real far down the side only about uh, you know not quite halfway so I think that should work that should probably be adequate um, this will obviously be the top so wherever we do that we'll put you know the mark there to indicate that that's the top so when we put it together and also to find a spot to make a hole kind of like this I think should be adequate like I said it's going to be mounted on a slight downward angle so anything should fall out right there um, also that would any being that it's on a downward angle any heat smoke fire coming upward like this would help draw smoke in maybe I don't know I'm not an engineer or a physicist. I'm just some guy in his backyard. That's why it's backyard garage. <clears throat> I think this is where I'm going to leave it at today. Um, that way my son can uh, help me with the rest of this. 
because um, this was really his idea, not mine. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going to shut her down, go in and enjoy uh, New Year's Eve with, uh, with my wife, and uh, we'll continue on tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope everybody had a good Merry Christmas. And uh, that's it for now. Cheers and beers.